This will probably be the last video that I make on Cool Cat Kelly for a while because I really just can't with him. This video he put up yesterday is so disgusting. I mean, really, this is embarrassing. Really. And, and, and I'll be honest with you guys. Let me tell you what, what angers me about Kelly, okay? Mandy and McKenna have more intellectual honesty than what this man does. I'm not saying that lightly. I'm not using hyperbole at all. I mean it, y'all. I have more respect for Mandy because she's a true believer in what she's doing. She believes what she's doing. Cool Cat does not. He knows he's doing clickbait. He knows he's being too clever by half. He knows it. He has admitted as much. He knows he's doing clickbait. And this update from yesterday was garbage. Garbage. Kelly justified his giddiness over the war in Israel and doubled down on it and literally said that if you're a true Christian, you will be excited over images of warfare. I am not kidding. You can hear this man for yourself being a disgusting, a disgusting hyena who is capitalizing on a war. This man is trolling us because he does not even believe this. Anyway, let's go through the video together. On YouTube Christians, let's go. This is a very quick update. I need everybody to stay calm. Revelation 12, 2 says that at the rapture, at the time of the birth, at the time of the delivery, Israel would be in pain. That's happening right now. So I'm really confused right now, Kelly. Why is it that in August and September, if it's plainly written, if it's so plainly written in Revelation, then what was all of your garbage about the time of life? What was the point of all of that if Revelation plainly says, I mean, are you just not paying attention when you read the Bible? Why do you get all of these clear revelations after the fact? It's almost as if you're doing this and not the Holy Spirit. How many dozens and dozens of time have, have we got reports where rockets come from Gaza, the Iron Dome shoots them down, it goes for two or three days, not too many casualties, and it's over with. They call a ceasefire, it's over with. This time, United States were involved, Russia's involved, Syria's involved, Saudi Arabia's involved, Germany, France, everybody's picking sides. This looks like it's... So this is very similar to the war in Ukraine, which rapturists said was World War III, because so many people were entangled and so many superpowers had interests there. So now I guess Ukraine is not starting World War III. This is. So why did we hear so much about Ukraine? Turning into World War III. Some people say Ezekiel 38. Listen, it can't be Ezekiel 38 because when that happens, it says they come against Israel who has unwalled villages. It's the dead giveaway in the whole in the whole chapter. It'll be unwalled after the Psalm 83 war. The Psalm 83 war is all the neighbors. It's funny how he takes that one thing about walls around villages. That's that's literal. Everything else in the Bible is mystical code for the rapture, but the walls on the villages mean real walls. Okay. Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, uh, even parts of Saudi Arabia, all the surrounding neighbors, Syria, when they win the Psalm 83 war, they won't need walls in Israel anymore because their borders will be increased. So Psalm 83 for His logic, his logic is that we will get to the point of Israeli villages demolishing protective city walls 
because they'll win so many wars, they will expand their territory and therefore say, hey, we're so successful, let's demolish all these walls we built. What? This, this is cool, Cat. That's all I can say. First, then Ezekiel 38, but what, look, what looks like it's going on now is World War III. Think about it. This is God's script. Evil is scripting their part, but the overall script is God. So again, we needed this to happen for the rapture to happen because she. You, we needed this to happen for the rapture. So what were you doing guaranteeing a rapture in September? Seriously. Had to be in pain to be delivered. Revelation 12, 2. So here's what's going to happen. So the interesting thing is I wonder if and when this all passes and something else happens, then we'll be told this had to happen for the rapture. Can't you see it's so clear? Yeah, we know the game. It's so beautiful. Only the true Christian can see through all this stuff. We see through all of it. That's why you see through... In, in, in 2020 hindsight, when your multiple predictions failed, now the true Christians can see what's really happening. Wow. So the true Christians who were telling you in September, XYZ needs to happen first. There's probably not going to be a rapture because we're nowhere close to XYZ happening. Those were the real Christians in September, right, Kelly? Right? Earthquakes in this war gets us excited. Now, look at what he just said. Earthquakes and wars get real Christians excited. Let's play that again so you can hear that. So, uh, it, it, it's so beautiful. Only the true Christian can see through all this stuff. We see through all of it. That's why earthquakes in this war gets us excited. Now, then somebody undoubtedly... True Christians are supposed to be excited by earthquakes and wars. That is what he just said. Undoubtedly, you'll say, well, there's been 800, 900 Israelis dead. People are kidnapped. Yeah, that's horrible. But what do you think is going to happen in the tribulation? You don't think people are going to die? Billions are going to die in the tribulation. So many people are going to die in the tribulation, they can't even bury them. So if you have a loved one or a friend who dies in this conflict, what are you upset for? It's only going to get worse. You're going to be walking amongst carnage, dead bodies all over the place. So you can't get all tweaked over, you know, eight, nine hundred people. Do we want anybody? to? Well, this is not some piddly little thing where Hamas shoots a couple rockets and, you know, a dozen people get hurt. You're the one who said that. You're the one who got tweaked by news reports of a major war where many people will die because it's bigger news than smaller skirmishes. You're the one tweaked by it, Kelly. And now you're mocking people who get tweaked about a high death count. This is rapturism. Did die? No, but that's all in the script. It's all in the plan. Judgment's coming to this world. So my point is, we see all this. The world does it. The world says, man, what is going on? This is why the world hates the Jews. This is what people think. So they see this world war starting because Israel won't give up land to the Palestinians. Th this is unbelievable. We see through it. The world doesn't. So the script must. So we see through the prophetic events occurring. And our reaction should be excitement. Keep in perspective what he's saying here. He's not saying, 
we see through the seriousness, ergo, we know it will get worse. And no, he's not saying we see the seriousness. He's saying we should be happy. We should be happy this is happening and unbelievers aren't. That is what he's saying right now. Continue to go on. So what looks like World War III is going to be interrupted by the rapture. When the smoke clears, they're going to come out of it with the mother of all peace deals, Daniel 9, 27. When they say peace and safety, Israel... So this is his official prediction for the outcome of this conflict. Kelly's official prediction is that this will provoke World War III, then the rapture will happen, then there will be chaos, and then there will be some sort of uh, demonic antichrist effort to restore peace and order, and that will be Daniel 9. Kelly is officially predicting that that is what will happen because of this conflict. Now, of course, of course, you know, next month it will be a completely different story with a completely different plan. But as of now, that's his prediction. With the world makes a peace deal with the Antichrist, then sudden destruction will come upon them. So we're already gone. They declare peace. Listen, without a war like this, declaring peace doesn't really mean anything. That's why they didn't come out with a peace deal from this latest summit. They went in there peaceful, right? It was peaceful. Hey, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. Let's iron this out. Saudi Arabia looks like they're ready to jump on board. Netanyahu held up the new map. There's the picture of the new Middle East. Yet it didn't get done. Why? Had to be a war first. But so help me understand something, Kelly. Back in September, when some of us were telling people, cool your jets, this UN summit is not the Daniel 9 agreement. Where were you? Where were you telling people in September this UN summit cannot be it? Where were you actively teaching and rebuking dopey people calling the UN summit Daniel 9? Hindsight is 2020, isn't it, Kelly? Bible prophecy has to be fulfilled. Now we got this raging war. Real people are dying. All the countries of the world are converging on the Middle East, this little dot in the desert, this little strip of land that everybody's been fighting over for 6,000 years. All. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you mean more like 4,000 years, but okay. All Bible prophecy, the world is asleep. So when they announce the peace deal, everybody's going to say, oh man, this is great. Finally, we have peace. But I'm confused. You said the rapture would happen first, so there would be chaos and that would interrupt World War III. So uh, uh, help me understand. Make it make sense, Kelly. Are they going to be confused and chaotic because the rapture has discombobulated everything? Or will they just be asleep thinking it's just like normal process? I I'm not understanding where you're going with this and sudden destruction will come and the tribulation will start and they'll have no idea what hit them. So we are like watching a movie where we already watched the end. We already know what's going to happen. So Christians, I I'm just exhausted right now. I will fire up another live. We could go tomorrow with the tie green theory of Feast of Trumpets really was September 19th, which would make that super moon <clears throat> the 29th, the Day of Atonement, which means tomorrow could be the real last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So we could go tomorrow. If we don't go to tomorrow, then God's timing is not what we thought it was. All the stories are true. I would be willing to wager a bet. I would be willing to bet money that God's timing will not be what you think it is. Because that's been what's been happening for years. Your time of life, your feast of trumpets, all of the garbage you've been teaching all summer was wrong. So I would go out on a limb and guess that you are wrong about this too. 
everything we dug out of the Bible is true. Just the timing of the rapture wasn't connected to it somehow, which I don't even know. To me, it had to be connected. So I'm still holding out hope for tomorrow. All glory to God. Everybody stay calm. Listen, praise God for what you're seeing on your TV and on your internet. All these reports coming in. It praise God for pictures of rubble in Jerusalem. That is what he just said. It's Bible prophecy. So it's not the Psalm 83 war. It won't turn into it at, until after we're gone, then the Ezekiel war, and then it'll be all kinds of wars in the tribulation. So praise God, quick update. Everybody chill out. I will go as I'm led by the Lord to do a live. Right now, we're just sitting tight. We, you know, witness to people. Tell your family it's coming. What you're watching on TV is Revelation 12 too. These are the same family members that you said, go tell them the rapture is coming on, you know, September 11th and September 17th and September 27th. Those are the same family members that heard three failed rapture dates in September. And now your fans are supposed to go tell them this. Okay. So praise God, let's go. Well, there you go. And you know what's really amazing about this? I went through his comments to see if there were, you know, did, did his fans, are his fans in the slightest bit concerned about this? No, no. The huge majority of his fans were literally telling him, oh, so glad to have you back. Such comforting words, such encouraging words. I feel so much better now that you've come back to encourage us. These people are disgusting. Disgusting. And if you still follow this man, shame on you.